Hello guys, this is Amin and in this tutorial I will be talking about the match moving uh, between Bojo and Cinema 4D. Uh, I will be using Bojo 4 and Cinema 4D uh, 11.5 and um, before I start I would like to let you know that this method I will be using is the one that I use. It, uh, if you find any other method that is better for you or easier, feel free to use it. So, uh, as a start, we have to import our sequence or the video that we ha uh, that we will work on. But you can do that by going to Setup, uh, Import Sequence, or clicking on this button here, and then uh, choose the video that you want to work on. I prepared a small one here. You got it. Click OK. If you have a long clip, uh, you can uh, choose the frames, uh, the start and the end frame to choose the part that you want to work with. I will just click OK. The first step to uh, make the match moving is to go to Setup, uh, Edit Camera. OK. Make sure that the pixel aspect here is set to 1 and the frame rate is set to the uh, frame rate of your clip that you uh, recorded my clip here that I'm going to use uh, was recorded in 29.97 uh, uh, frames per second so I will choose this and I will click OK the second thing that we have to do is uh, click here on uh, track features the next thing I will do is go to advance and then increase the sensitivity to the maximum rate here to get more tracking points as I said uh, this is what I use to get my results if uh, some other tutorials say that you can choose this to uh, large or normal I will stick with the normal settings here and I will click start so the program will start doing the um, uh, tracking of the points in this uh, okay, so the tracking feature has uh, just finished uh, doing the tracking of the points and as you can see uh, that I chose to track as many points as I can and as a result I will see and you can see this uh, too much points has been tracked. I believe this is going to be uh, better to get uh, a better result of the uh, tracking uh, scene that you have but yeah if you want to use the other uh, settings feel free to do that the next thing we will do is uh, doing the camera solve uh, by clicking on that you will have these options there uh, some like I said some other tutorials I recommend you to check these on I will leave them uh, as the default by not uh, doing anything and just clicking start this takes some time so yeah I will be back once this is finished Okay, uh, now after this uh, tracking has finished, now as I move uh, between uh, back and forth in, in the time, I will see that I have these points, which, which are the guides for me uh, when I do the, uh, or when I add the 3D uh, stuffs that I have. The last thing after uh, you finish doing your solve and track feature is to export uh, the camera solve uh, into the 3D program you have and in this case we will use Cinema 4D so go to export, export camera solve and you will have this window, click browse to choose the file spot that you, uh, or the file uh, location okay uh, so I will save it here uh okay save it and uh, here I will uh, choose the export type to uh, Cinema 4D okay and yeah that's uh, that's everything that I want to do with this now alright so now I'll move to uh, Cinema 4D to complete uh, the second part of this so in Cinema 4D uh, I will go to uh, file open then open the file that we saved from Bojo and I will leave everything as it is click OK and I will see right here that I, I am having some points in the screen and if I move in the timeline I will see them moving this is the tracking points that we uh, imported from Bojo what I will do now is uh, I need to set a background uh, which is the video that I used so um, I will go to materials files new material and then double click on it and the color I will come here and choose the video of the scene that I used uh, there it is uh, the tracking tutorial no I don't want to copy that to the uh, location of this uh, tutorial file and leave it everything as it is okay 
I will come here then and add a background and simply drag this material on it. Okay, so uh, right now, if I move again in the timeline, I will see that these points are stick sticking. I'm sorry f uh, to the uh, walls of uh, this map, uh, which is uh, done by uh, Bojo. So uh, the next thing will be simply adding the 3D uh, effects that we want, uh, whether it's a text or simply an object. So, if, for example, if we drop a cube in the middle of the scene and move it to uh, to any place that we want and start playing the uh, and start moving in the timeline we'll see that it's stuck it's sticking in the in its place so uh, yeah if we just simply play this uh, I'm sorry it's lagging it a little bit because uh, yeah it's taking too much of my RAM to record and play so uh that's basically it. Now you can, uh, what you can do is add the text or uh, add whatever you want, then add the lights or shadows to it. I will show you my method of doing that. I will go to mod graph, a uh, text object, then I will write anything, uh, whatever I mean. Okay. So, uh, and maybe change the, vo uh, the font, I'm sorry, to anything that you want. Maybe make it bold. Uh, what else? Maybe add some depth to it. Okay. Maybe uh, do some caps. Why not? Now, how do I line the text on the floor of this map or uh, the scene that I have? First of all, I will add a plane. Okay. Now, this plane will play as the floor, but I have to position it in the correct position. And uh, now, uh, I will click on the plane and go to functions transfer okay now I can transfer this uh, plane or this floor that I made into any place that I want what I will do is uh, I will change the uh, viewport and I will see that uh, there are a lot of reference um, points that I have here obviously these ones seems to be the floor ones so I will just click on one of these and I will see that my plane is uh, transferred into uh, this position right here Next, I will scale it up by changing the width and the height, maybe to like something like 3000 by 3000. It seems so small, so I will bump it out so hard. So I will just make it something like this. Okay. So uh, the next uh, uh, thing that I will do is I will choose the text object here. I will change the viewport again and then. And uh, select the move tool, drag this into uh, the edge of the uh, plane that I have, so it seems that like it's uh, it's on the floor or something. Okay, so I will go back and I will see that um, the position uh, is not that much of what I wanted, so I will move it back a little bit, maybe scale it up. You have to play with this till you get uh, the position that you want it. Okay, so this seems pretty good if we uh, play it. And uh, since it's lagging like hell, I will just move forward. It seems like uh, pretty much in uh, in position for me. So I will do what next? Uh, yeah, adding the shadows to this scene. So uh, if I do just simply a quick render, we will see that uh, there is there are firstly no shadows, and this um, plane is messing up my scene tr with I don't know very ugly way. So what I will do is I will take the same uh, material of my background video that I made for um, for uh, the background and drop it on the plane as well. Okay. And in, on the uh, material uh, properties here, I will change the projection from UVW uh, mapping to frontal. Okay, now when I do another render, we'll see that it has the same of the background, but yet it's still dark and messing up my scene. You can, I will uh, use the ambient occlusion. You can do that by going to the render settings. You can find it. You can find it here. Sorry. Then going to effects. Ambient occlusion. 
sorry my voice cracked so just by adding it and going back to the viewport and doing a test render I will see that there are some shadows being cast in the, sec in the text itself but not on the floor next I will go to the plane here right click uh, Cinema 4D tag, then compositing, and then uh, I will see this uh, box here, uh, compositing background. I will simply check it, and then do a second render, and immediately I will see that there are some shadows being casted. Well, uh, this seems pretty damn good for me. But if you want to add some extra shadows, you can go back to the settings of the ambient inclusion and increase it by uh, increasing the ma the maximum uh, uh, ray length maybe uh, it's, uh, increasing the uh, maximum samples also and uh, adding more colors to it let's do another render and see how it looks yeah well obviously there are more shadows being casted so uh, what do you have to do next is I don't know basically you can change the texture of the text or something well, the next thing that you have to do is simply uh, do the render between Cinema 4D to After Effects. And the settings that I used uh, to do the render between Cinema 4D and After Effects, well, the settings are that I use is uh, the anti-aliasing. I always do it uh, or change it to best. I choose uh, the output, of course, to uh, whatever uh, frame uh, size that I want change the frame range to all frames and in the save menu the path that you want for uh, saving this and of course uh, make it a TIFF uh, BSD layers if you want to edit uh, in After Effects if uh, you don't and you want to take it to, to uh, Premiere or Vegas or whatever you want you can change it to uh, AVI or a quick time movie Sometimes when I add the, the particles or whatever I do with the uh, effect that I cannot add in Cinema 4Ds, uh, I will uh, choose to add some compositing with After Effects just by uh, checking these and then click here on Save Project. Uh, this is uh, pretty much everything for this tutorial. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, you learned something new and if you have any questions on this, I will be more than happy to answer them and have a happy new year and see you guys soon.